Good morning and welcome to The Mix. It's the show where two pastors talk about a little bit of everything. That's true. Ooh, and man, uh, we have some pretty interesting questions today. We were looking through the bag this past week and you guys are bringing it. You're bringing some really interesting questions. That's a lot of fun, man. It is. You know, it, it, it's good that people are asking questions, wanting to know uh, the answers to some of these things. And I find it, you know, a lot more interesting to see that you're looking at maybe your own life, or you're looking at things in the Bible that just don't make sense. So we really appreciate it. Keep them coming. But before we jump into all of that, let's talk about the morning mix today. Uh, now, the first question to kind of open us up and warm us up a little bit. What was your first job? Now, I know that was back in maybe the 1700s or something, but, you know, sure, what was... Sure. Uh, <laughs> so, what was the first job that you've ever had before? We were rocking the 90s, dude. Um, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, so, I mean, I grew up on a farm, so we worked all the time there, right? Mm. But... Um, I got a summer job, my first summer job away from the farm, other than like odd job stuff, was actually working at the school. Mm. And so, yeah, me and a bunch of my friends thought it was a great idea. We're just all going to apply for that, and we're going to work down at the school. So we basically spent the summer like all day working minimum wage, essentially just cleaning. So you're scraping gum off the bottom of chairs. You're just scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing, you know, until you get all the ink off the top of the surface. So you're just going about three rooms a day. You're just kind of plowing through You're clapping those erasers and stuff too? Yeah, I, we had, yeah, <laughs> we're sort of cleaning all the boards and, you know, everything. Basically top to bottom gets cleaned out, you know, and all the, the desks were the hard part because, you know, kids are drawing on them and whatever else. You just had to scrub and scrub. And so that was kind of it. Yeah, you guys – just missed the invention of the whiteboard that would have made a lot of that uh, trouble easier for you. Oh, chalk boards are easier than whiteboards, honestly. I mean, to clean? Yeah, for uh, real. Absolutely, know. man. Chalk comes know. off easy. Dry erase kind of gets left on there. It gets pain. Right. Yeah, my first job was a little more exciting than that one. Uh, we lived in Alabama <laughs> at the time, <laughs> and uh, uh, there's a lot of these kind of surfer shops down by the beach where you get like – um, inflatables and shark tooth necklaces and stuff. Well, I, I kind of worked for the company that sold those wholesale. So I loaded and unloaded semis by myself all day. And then we would go out for deliveries. And I was making a little more than minimum wage. I was making about 500 a week, which Dude. 15 years old for your first job. That's a, that's a pretty sweet deal. I might have rolled 500 a month. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. But it was kind of cool That's just to be able to go along the beach and kind of see everybody excited. And we sold some weird stuff, too. There's one item that we sold, no joke. It was a um, former living baby shark in a jar. We sold them. Like in a formaldehyde, it, alcohol. It's not something you mixture. open, yeah, but yeah, you yeah. just have it, Sealed. you put it on your shelf. You just got like a baby shark. I don't even want to go with that. That's it's weird, dude. <laughs> like trying to turn it into a jam or something. <laughs> just, uh. Oh, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> When they cleaned out the science room at school, like my son Caleb, he he got this huge jar. It's like a huge pickle jar, like one of those, mm. and it's got a like a boa constrictor just wrapped up in there mm. in formaldehyde. He opened it up once, and it oh was man. it was terrible. I was like, dude, never again, never again, open that. Mm. Ugh. So interesting things. What was your first job? Uh, did you do anything exciting, or was it just? You know, pick a gum off things. We'd be interested to know. Let us know uh, what your first job experiences were. Comment in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, hopefully it was more exciting than maybe some of the stuff we've had. Now, going on to our main mix, and um, this is a nice one because usually we kind of find a topic that we've had some people talk to us about, but this one actually came from the mix bag itself. Now, sometimes when you submit a question, we find these questions that, Really, you can't do the answer justice in two minutes. Yeah. You need to give it a little bit more. Vince's got three or four of those, so right. the next couple segments we can do some of those questions, which is fun. Absolutely. And if you don't hear your question answered, it's probably because we're trying to dedicate a whole episode to it or trying to think about what a really good answer would be. Or it's still in the bag. So uh, why don't you read the question sure. for today and then give us some insight on that. Uh, so the question essentially reads this. During my life, all my bad choices I've made before I was saved, was God preparing me and letting me go through all of that so that I would make the decision to ask him into my life, even though it took years for me to listen? Uh, so, like, as you think about that, there's, a <laughs> there's like three or four different questions that we were trying to unpack that as we were just preparing for the episode here. And so we thought we'd kind of talk about it in a general way, like the purposes of God, like what's God up to in your life? And so 
we broke it down into essentially three different categories. Like the things mm-hmm. you experienced, that's kind of what they're saying. Like the things I went through was God preparing me, you know. Um, you talk about like your humanity, like just who mm-hmm. I am particularly. Like, like you're, you're who you are and, and you're, uh, you know, a mix of all kinds of stuff. And then, of course, like what's God, where do I fit in the world? Like how do, right. how do I take me and the things I've experienced and bring those all together into the world? And we have a temptation sometimes of when we have negative experiences, we like to sometimes associate it with something. And it's interesting. Sometimes we'll say maybe it's the devil yeah, doing like this. Or yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. Or maybe like, I don't know. Some, I mean, even non-Christians have the perspective of sometimes maybe God's like that mean kid with a magnifying glass and we're the ants. So what is God up to with these experiences? Like what, what's yeah, the purpose well, of th- them? Is he doing them? Like what, what's going on with that? I think a lot of that's going to determine where you fall on – there's a, there's a scale in theology, essentially, when we talk about the sovereignty of God and responsibility of man. So if you have, like, this spectrum across here, like, let's say sovereignty of God, like, all the way over on this bookend of sovereignty of God, you have, like, determinism. And, like, that means, like, God God determined how many times you were going to breathe today. Mm. Um, he determined how many hairs are on your head. And there's truth to that because he knows those things. The question is, does he actually make it, like, okay, I'm going to take three away or 300 in my case, you know? So what's, you know, how, how much is God determining? Is he determining that your your dog would bark at a particular time and wake you up? Or, you know, who knows? And I'm assuming that the determination isn't just the good things, but maybe there's even bad things that God will determine. Yeah, so, so if, if you're a determinist, um, I- as far as, like, the sovereignty of God, like, you you believe that God has his hand. Like, he's, he's running everything. We don't have any agency whatsoever. Mm. We're just basically, essentially, Ottomans doing what he has designed for us to do and has created us specifically to do. So mm. there's a lot of room on this scale over here, right? So that's like there's not very many people who are full-scale determinist. Mm. And so most people are somewhere over here like God is in charge. And I think everybody believes no matter where you fall on this scale that God is in right. charge, like he's overall, he's sovereign. The question is, is where, uh, like in how, to what extent does God control all of these things? Mm. Um and there's some scriptural guidelines, but uh, let me just leave that for a second. Come over to your side of the scale, like way mm. over on the other side. It is almost like a, a, a deistic approach, like God just set us loose and he's not really involved at all. Right. So kind of made something. We're creating everything. He, he wound up the clock and here you go. Uh, so he set some mechanisms in place that are there just naturally. They're part of his creation, but he's not really intricately involved in maneuvering or, or managing things. So he set the scene pretty much. He put us in there, and he says, okay, you guys, let's see what happens yeah, it's here. A, it's like a spontaneous act, right? We just gotcha. And we're all the result of a, a bazillion different choices that we all make, and God isn't involved really in any of that. So that's way right. on the other scale. There's very, very few people who are of that p- position either. So there's a lot of room in between. Right. And anywhere in between those two bookends, basically God, people believe God's in charge and he's involved in some degree. And then on the other hand, we de- believe that we have some agency, the ability to act independently, like to do mm-hmm. things, to make decisions and those kind of things. Or uh, we have responsibility and those are two different kind of nuances. So right. when we talk about our experiences, that's one of the things we have to navigate like where where are you on this scale and if you're talking with somebody who's of a, a different place pretty significantly on the scale then you're going to have very different perspectives on what that means right right so so in this case like this person asked something then i go i want to take both of us back to scripture because the bible talks about a couple things one the bible clearly points out that god can bring experiences even calamities into our life into our world mm-hmm. to get our attention to uh discipline us to do a bunch of different things right right um and sometimes those are intended to get our, you know drive us to our knees and and to surrender um i think the the one danger that people can make is assuming that that, that god's behind everything like it and, and so that's way over here in determinism and i don't tend to fall on that right scale ultimately over here that god is like he's he's shaping every word that comes up. I mean, you know, th- there's all kinds of levels of determinism. So Sometimes of the danger of the negative things happening, we can kind of have this mindset of, like, we did, like, God is doing something bad to us because we need correcting. Making us suffer. Dude. Right, and, you know, kind of saying, like, it, it isn't always that way. Like, so, something bad happens to us. It could mm-hmm. be God correcting you, but it could also not be God correcting you. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, so God can bring suffering. He can bring trials, those kind of things. Uh, the one thing that the scripture is very explicit about is that God doesn't tempt us. Mm. And he's not tempted by evil either. So, um, like, if you're like, oh, you know, God God put this temptation in front of me and I keep struggling with it. No, no, that's the result of inward sin, you know, that mm. that inward sin, um, original sin is another, you know, common theological word for that. And so there's a lot of suffering that exists in our world for two reasons. One, because we're all sinful, every single one of us. And we do things that cause pain, suffering, and mm. there's a lot of that that happens in the world. A lot of people suffer because of s- the actions of someone else. That's not, you shouldn't necessarily attribute that automatically to God or the devil. You might just say, like, that's that's sinful people causing pain and suffering. Uh, so that's that's one thing to, to keep in mind there. It, it's really a challenge when, when you get to this because I think a lot of people want an answer. It's not a black and white kind of a thing. All they the want to know, like, why is this happening right. to me? And, and I, I, I always tell people that the why is something you may never know. It may be something you may know in eternity. It may not. Mm-hmm. I don't know the answer to that. Um, but the, the scripture is very clear that the what is, is really outlined for us. Mm-hmm. So does God want you to surrender like this question asks us? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So our experiences can drive us to that. Right. If you segue over into your humanity, like we broke it down into that, like if you think about your humanity, like what are some of the what are some of the skills and abilities that you have? Uh, what what are some of the passions that you have? Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a lot that goes into us that forms who we are, our strengths, our weaknesses, mm-hmm. you know, the peculiarities, you know, all those kind of things. And sometimes we, especially at working with young people, they tend to really negatively compare themselves to others be really insecure about who they are and i always challenge them to think okay i'm fearfully and wonderfully made like god created me uniquely and wonderful and there's no one else like me so in your humanity like you're like why am i the way i am i i want to remind people there's a there's a negative side to that because we all bear original sin Mm -hmm, yeah but i want you to think about this every single person i believe who's ever been created is created in the image of god that's the scripture proclaims that right we're all created in the image of the Imago Dei. Right. Think about that none of us could ever come close to displaying the greatness, goodness, and amazing nature of God. Mm -hmm. But I want to suggest that God created each person individually with a unique ability in their particular way, just uniquely them, to maybe best illustrate, best kind of point to an aspect of the nature of God that they could do better than anybody else in the human family. Right, and I think it's also important, because we, we've talked about this at church before, that there is a difference between spiritual gifts yeah. and spiritual fruit, okay. like the fruit of the Spirit. Um, some people might kind of get them confused, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, sure. and self-control. That's an expectation for everyone, where spiritual gifts... Um, not everybody is necessarily gifted with the gift of teaching. Um, sure. Some people leading worship, like that's not their thing. Right. Um, and honestly, that's okay because, like you said, God made us unique and we can use our uniqueness as well as, um, in some cases, I'm not tempted the same way that someone else may be tempted. Um, yeah, so you can use those things for great good. You can also use those unique qualities for great evil, right? Right. <coughs> like you think of, like some of these really magnanimous leaders through the past, you know, mm. whether, you know, horrific things that have been done, you know, by influencing people on a large scale, like people like Hitler, for instance, or something. But there's a lot of magnanimous leaders in politics and the church and other, other a lot of realms that people have used their own uh, humanity for great good. Mm-hmm. Like people recognize universally, like Mother Teresa is a common name, mm-hmm. right? Like, Billy Graham, people might know some of those names. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there's there's other people who have done horrible things. Right. So we all have, again, those responsibilities. And the question is, did God create you uniquely with these advantages or disadvantages or strengths or weaknesses, whatever? And the answer is yes. Right. He did design you, uniquely you. But I b- So that's his part. And he says, here's why I created you. I created you for this relationship with me and to use those things in the world for good. But then you turn around, and then there's an Achilles heel to that, that 
original sin wants to twist and distort and destroy that right. and use it to create chaos in your own life and in the world. And is that God's intention? Is God like saying, no, I created you so you'd have chaos in the world? And the answer is no. Mm-hmm. <coughs> he created us so that we would have that opportunity to show off his image mm-hmm. and to, to do wonderful things as he designed for us to do. So so that's that's kind of where I fall on this line. Like mm-hmm. I, I believe God d- has created us and he's uniquely determined us and he gives us advantages and, and abilities and all those kind of things. But it's it's really our responsibility uh, when we have those abilities, recognize them, discover them, mm-hmm. and then utilize them. So that kind of points us to our last segment, which is kind of the world, right? The world, yep. So as I've been talking about that, think about like what does that mean for the world like? I think a lot of people today feel disjointed Mm -hmm. and they feel disconnected. They feel purposeless. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I hear that question like that, I think there's a part of that that's trying to figure out like, where do I fit in the world? Like what was God's big plan for me? The first thing is that you would come to a personal relationship with him. Right. And surrender your life to him. And, And that means everything you are to be used for his glory instead of your own. But there's another part of that, that God's up to a lot of things in the world. And one of the things that I really like, have you ever gotten one of those LED flashlights, the new ones? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the really like so, so like in the face. Yeah, kind of so thing. there's two different kinds. Like <laughs> like there's the ones where it's just like a huge, huge LED. Mm-hmm. And then there's the ones like they used to make when they first started out where they're like, oh, a lot of small LEDs. Like that's the thing. Like we've got right, 65 right. LEDs packed into this thing, you know, <laughs> and it's just going to blind anybody. But I think that's kind of what the the church is supposed to be. It's a bunch of imperfect people that are coming together, but they surrendered their lives to Christ, and their their goal is to is to utilize that in a way that brings glory and honor to God. And then they're one LED that shines in a particular way, and then another one joins them, and we join together, and we clump together, and we become this body that mm-hmm. sticks together, mm-hmm. and and it becomes really powerful. Right. And and people are like, man, you can't miss that when a bunch of people come together, and we recognize they're all imperfect, they all have a past. I mean, you've got a past. I've got a past. Absolutely, we've all yeah. had failures and those kind of things. But when we surrender those to God, um, yes, that God's will is that we would surrender Him, and then we would utilize how He's uniquely created us to not only do good things, but also to do good things that give Him glory, and and that the world can see those kind of things. And I think that's how I would kind of respond to somebody like that. Like God wasn't forcing those bad things onto you per se like unless you really really know that Mm -hmm. but know this that god never wastes a preparation right he can use all that stuff right to further his purposes when you surrender your life to him and that's kind of like with me i've talked about like some of my past with episodic depression i still have little bumps with that and it's one of those things where i could try to hide it pretend it doesn't exist or i could just say you know what this is part of who god made me it's one of the weaknesses i have but i'm going to utilize this i'm going to be transparent about it talk with people openly about it but at the end of the day recognize it's got strength that enables me to keep moving forward and to uh, do what needs to be done and by his by his strength and his spirit i'll be able to still continue to make a difference in people's lives and in the world absolutely and i yeah absolutely um so hopefully that answers your question um continue adding the questions we love these tough questions we want to continue helping you guys understand a little bit more about the bible about what it means to be a christian today and uh just keep them coming we're loving it now speaking of which we're going to look at the mixed bag now there's a few questions in here that look like we can answer them pretty quickly. Yeah, i'm going to read because i did a lot of talking so i'll, I'll read and then you can answer how's that sound? all right give me That's one cool. um how can the people in your life in your church basically best support you as a pastor you know that's a good question um there's a lot of things that people have done at our church that have been a real blessing to us um for me personally uh because we have two children you know a seven-year-old and a two-year-old it's hard to have both myself and my wife Allie at youth group and there's a family in church that volunteers to to watch our kids during youth group time so so there's like people who help so that we can do ministry better together. And then there's also times where people send encouraging words, um, people praying for us. You can never pray too much for your pastor. Um, Anytime someone says, like, can I pray for you? It's it's like, please, I'll I'll take all the prayer that I can get. You need it. Um, But honestly, the gifts of friendship, uh, being able to go out and have a conversation. I I went fishing the other day um, with uh, 
with someone from our congregation and everything. So a lot of those tiny things that may not seem like a lot, they really do mean just so much. So just even a smile, continuing to ask questions, but that'd All probably right. be how I'd say try it. to get through uh, this one and one other. If God created the sun, moon, and on the fourth day, how long is the first three days? That's a good question. And, you know, there's two different sides of it. There's those who think because the sun and the moon wasn't created yet, God spent the billions and billions of years to create the entire universe, where others would say that, no, it was still three literal days. From what I understand, if you look at the Hebrew... It's young. I'm sorry? The Hebrew word is young. Yes. If you look at the Hebrew, it, it, it talks about... It, it uses the word day. So I lean more towards, you know, seven literal days. But I will say, what happens if you're wrong? What happens if in those three days it was actually billions and billions of years? Okay, that's fine. That's not really a salvation issue kind of a thing. It's more of a, you know, who did it? God did it. That's kind of a important thing that I would say. All right, we'll let that slide. <laughs> okay. Um. So this is uh, just a open-ended question, kind of explain or define glory. Glory. Well, I mean I, I, well, you know, <laughs> it's just there's a lot of ways we can go with that. <laughs> well, uh, I think there's the nature of God type of glory, and then there's the like giving God glory type right. of thing. And I think there's two different things. So obviously, none of us can contribute to God's glory. You know, we can't add, or we can't subtract right from the glory of God. So essentially, as I define that, is like glory is the definition of the greatness of God. Like, all of who he is, both and in his goodness. His and he's not dependent on us, like, mm-hmm. being able to give that to him either. It's not a requirement or a need necessarily for him. Yeah, so when we give glory to God, essentially, we're not adding to him. We're simply proclaiming who he is. Mm-hmm. And that glorifies him. It's like if I, you know, talk about a professional athlete that's really doing amazing things. Like, me explaining that, like, I'm hyping them, you might say, but... I'm I'm not adding anything to who they are. Like right. I'm just pointing to who they are. Right. And so in this, and obviously a much grander scale, we do that with God. Mm. So, a couple questions we got out of the bag. Yeah. Good. Awesome. We'll continue keeping them coming. Um, continue sending them in the comments below. And uh, well, I think that's all the time that we have for today. Ooh, it flew by today. Yeah. No, it did. It absolutely did. And we will continue to answer those questions. Keep sending them in. And uh, I think we're going to sign off now. So. This is uh, The Mix, and we'll see you guys next time.